Can you tell which of these voices is real and which is AI? Baby, it's too late, love, I will you on you Gotta tell you the truth, can't lie with you If you pick B, you're wrong. They're both AI. One just cloned correctly. Using Kiss the AI, you can create super realistic AI voice models. But the quality you put in is the quality you get out. So to create a great voice model, you need a data set of at least 50 minutes of high quality recording. This can be achieved either by exporting vocals from existing recording sessions or recording from scratch. If you want to use pre-existing session files, it's as simple as going into your door, disabling any effects like reverb and delay, and exporting. If you don't have enough material to fill out the 15 minute minimum, feel free to record a data set yourself. Choosing the right mic makes all the difference. For voice cloning, a large diaphragm condenser microphone is your best bet. It's super sensitive and it captures all the little details in your voice, making it perfect for studio recordings. But if you're in a noisier environment or on a tighter budget, a dynamic microphone can still do the job. It's more durable, handles loud sounds better, and picks up less background noise. This one's great for live settings. Avoid laptop, phone, and lapel mics. For normal speaking or singing, aim to keep your mic about two inches away from your mouth. But for louder phrases or belting, pull back to around four to six inches. Never be further than 12 inches or you will lose clarity. And don't forget the pop filter. Place it about one inch in front of the mic to avoid those harsh P and B sounds, also known as plosives. Avoid angling your mic and make sure to maintain a steady distance throughout the performance. No moving the mic during phrases or covering it with your hand. Here's what bad mic placement looks like. Peanut butter. And now with good mic placement. Peanut butter. Now the roomy recording also matters. In a room like this, you can hear the natural reverberation from my voice bouncing up the walls. This is a big no. If you don't have a treated room with acoustic panels, you can get creative with blankets, furniture, or even your own clothes. All of this helps to absorb the sound and reduce the reverb. But it's not just the reverb you have to worry about. Avoid background noise like traffic, planes, sirens, or even barking dogs, as these sounds are tough to remove in post-production. You also want to be careful about electric hums from things like fluorescent lights, refrigerators, or improperly grounded equipment. Even the whirring from your computer's fan or LED lights can sneak into your recording. Your audio file settings directly impact the quality of your AI voice model. Without the right settings, even the best recordings can fall flat. When capturing high fidelity audio, you want to ensure that your sample rate is at least 48 kilohertz before recording. You can change this in the settings of your favorite DAW. For example, in Ableton, you can go to settings, then audio, and select 48 kilohertz for the sample rate. In Logic, head over to project settings, click audio, and adjust your settings there. The sample rate gives you a wide frequency range and realistic dynamics, which is crucial when creating an AI voice model. When you're recording, aim for your input level to stay between 12 dB and 6 dB. This gives you a safe range to avoid distortion while maintaining a good signal strength. Start by singing or speaking at the loudest level you expect to reach during the performance. You see here that I peaked at almost around zero, so that means I gotta turn down. You gotta watch your input meter. So I'm gonna bring this down. So you want your level to stay around 30 to 50% of the meter. So now my peak is kind of hitting that minus 6 dB level, which is perfect. It's always better to record a bit too low than too loud, because you can always turn it up, but if you start clipping, you can't really fix that. With the right volume levels, your AI clone will sound clean and professional. And keep in mind, 15 minutes of high quality audio is a good baseline for building a data set. After that, the improvements become marginal. So focus on quality instead of quantity. After collecting about 15 minutes of confident singing examples in the style you want to clone, I would suggest you take an extra 10 minutes, including examples of low notes, high notes, isolated phonemes, and sibilant sounds to make sure you've covered every sound possible. Your AI voice clone can only accurately reproduce what it hears in your dataset, so include as many words and pitches as possible. And whether it's audio glitches or singing mistakes, don't include anything you wouldn't want your AI voice to learn. Remember, voice cloning requires monophonic input, so do not include any vocal stacks or harmonies. Decide what vocal quality you would like to clone. For example, if you want an AI voice to have a gritty character when singing high notes, do not include falsetto vocals in the same pitch range as the gritty vocals. The lyrics on screen contain every phoneme in the American English language. You can use these lyrics with a variety of articulations and melodies for a quality dataset. And the following lines are great for making sure your dataset includes essential sibilant sounds and rare phonemes. By recording these lines, you'll build a dataset that covers all the bases, ensuring your AI voice clone is as realistic and versatile as possible. 
Now let's cover some quick post-processing tips to avoid common mistakes. First, avoid over compression. Too much compression flattens the natural dynamics of your voice, so aim for light compression around three to six decibels of gain reduction. Next, skip the reverb and delay. While these might sound nice in a mix, it blurs the clarity needed for AI voice cloning. So keep your vocal track dry with no backing track. Don't include any harmonies or doubles. All input must be monophonic. For background noise, a simple noise gate can help remove any hums or room noise. Just set it to block the quiet parts without altering your voice. For EQ, focus on clarity. Remove any low-end rumble or mid-range mud, but keep the changes subtle. You're cleaning the sound, you're not changing it. Once you're done, make sure you export your file as a 24-bit wave. This preserves the highest quality audio, ensuring that all the nuances and the dynamic range of your voice are captured accurately for the AI to process. All right, let's quickly recap everything we've covered. First, mic placement. Stay close, but not too close. Remember, two inches for regular volume and four to six inches for louder phrases. Second, your recording environment matters. Minimize reverb by using soft materials and avoid recording in noisy or untreated spaces. Third, always set your sample rate to 48 kilohertz for high fidelity. Fourth, keep an eye on your volume levels and stay between negative 12 and negative 6 dB to avoid clipping. For post-processing, keep it simple. Avoid any reverb and over-compression and use a noise gate for cleaner recordings. And finally, when exporting, ensure it's a 24-bit WAV file. Consistency is key. By following these steps every time you record, you'll get reliable, high-quality results for your AI voice models. We love to see your results, so share your voice models with us at Kiss the AI or join the community to connect with other creators. And if you're looking for more tutorials and resources, head over to Kiss the AI for everything you need to master voice cloning. If you found this video useful, make sure to hit like and subscribe and keep an eye out for more videos like this. Thanks for watching and happy cloning.